Agnolo Bronzino, Mannerist Painter of the Late Renaissance Mannerism refers to a style of painting that emerged in Rome and Florence between 1510 and 1520 during the later years of the High Renaissance. Mannerism acted as a link between the idolized style of Renaissance art and the dramatic theatricality of the Baroque. Agnolo Bronzino was considered a leading painter during the mid-16th century, or Cinque Centro, in Florence, Italy. His style of mannerism blended the harmonious ideals, proportion, balance, and beauty of the High Renaissance with his own unique style that took portraiture one step further, resulting in cool, detached realism, courtly elegance, and vivid color. This approach established him in history as an old master in the second wave of Italian mannerism. During the late Renaissance in the 16th century, Bronzino became known as a leader in Florentine mannerism. His most notable works being that of portraiture, many of which were commissioned by Cosimo de' Medici, the first Grand Duke of Tuscany. Bronzino's portraits presented their subjects in an austere and haughty manner, with stoic visages but vivid colors, all the while maintaining clean lines and a sense of realism. He was also known for his frescoes and allegorical paintings, which featured members of the Medici family and favored courtiers. A true genius, not merely an unusual painter, Bronzino also provided designs for tapestries as well as obtained prominence as a prolific writer and poet known for witty, mischievous verse. Born Agnolo Torri di Cosimo di Moriano, but more commonly known as Agnolo Bronzino, or just Bronzino. History is unsure of why Bronzino was better known by his numerous nicknames as stories widely vary on the background of these sobriquets. But the general consensus leans towards his coloring, red curly hair, ruddy cheeks, and a dusky complexion as being the culprit. Not much is known of Bronzino's early life either. As the son of a butcher, Bronzino was born on November 17, 1503, in Italy, into an impoverished family. Reportedly, Bronzino was initially apprenticed at a young age to the goldsmith Raffaellino del Garbo, but only a scant few years later it is reported he had become the pupil and some say adopted son of Jacopo Carucci da Potormo, who was to become a huge influence in Bronzino's life. It is said that as a pupil of Potormo, Bronzino's style so closely matched that of his master that to this day there are paintings in question as to which of the two is to be credited. Bronzino may have never inherited Potormo's aptitude for drawing, but he made up for failing to do so by mastering oils, tempera, and fresco painting. Bronzino spent a vast majority of his formative years collaborating on projects with his master, only leaving his side once during the Siege of Florence in 1530. However, he was quickly recalled to begin work on a commission of frescoes for several Medici estates. Bronzino never left Florence again. After working on frescoes with his master, he was eventually commissioned to undertake the ceremonial decorations for the arrival of Eleanor of Toledo, the Duke's intended bride. This undertaking led to the highest honor and appointment of Bronzino's life. Bronzino outstripped his master in the end by obtaining the coveted position of official court painter to the powerful Medici family. His eye to detail when it came to portraiture and his uncanny ability to transfer onto canvas the power and importance of each subject by displaying the sumptuous clothing and jewels, the precious objects near to hand, even the dogs that advertise the subject's importance, was an invaluable asset. These intricately painted objects exhibited the power and prominence of his illustrious clients and validated their lofty status and sense of self-importance, a talent which made him an invaluable addition at the Medici court. Bronzino also exercised a technique that portrayed his models as aloof, passive, and indifferent, which was interpreted as displaying the subject's superiority and status to those observing the portraits. 
Bronzino's portraiture proved to be his greatest endeavor, so much so that the style with which he painted his subjects in court portraiture persisted beyond his death and well into the Elizabethan era. Of Bronzino's numerous portraits, the most well known are those of Duke Cosimo and that of Eleanor Toledo and her young son Giovanni, as well as separate portraits of Bartolomeo Pensiatici and his wife Lucrezia. His allegory of Venus, Cupid, Folly, and Time, also known as Allegory of Lust, is however one of his best known works. Commissioned by Duke Cosimo as a gift for King Francis I of France. His tempera panel painting, Deposition of Christ, was laid out in much the same way as the allegory, a crowded composition which was in keeping with the Florentine mannerism style of the time. In 1545, Bronzino provided the design for an elaborate tapestry depicting the story of Joseph for the Palazzo Vecchio, the town hall of Florence, Italy. In his frescoes, you see echoes of Bronzino's idolization of the works of Michelangelo and his appreciation for the masterpieces of the great artist. Unfortunately, Bronzino was never very successful with his religious paintings as they were considered contrived and were even accused of borrowing heavily from the works of Michelangelo and Raphael. As time went on and the Catholic Church's revival of the Counter-Reformation occurred, you see less and less imaginative development in Bronzino's works. It is said the Reformation caused a disruption of his style, with his later works revealing unresolved agitation, an issue which persisted until his death. Bronzino, while not as widely known for his poetry as for his portraiture, was still a prolific writer who produced a massive amount of burlesque poetry or capitoli. While the capitoli did not make up all of his poetry, being only 51 pieces out of 300 poems, it is, however, his most commonly focused on contribution, as most of it was either erotic or homoerotic in nature. Filled with wit and innuendo, the pieces by Bronzino are more often comically obscene than sexual in nature. The poems are constructed of double meanings about everyday inanimate objects standing in for erotic counterparts, which the reader must decode. While his Capitoli is likened by some to the hard and yielding surfaces of his paintings, his sonnets on the other hand are likened to the Medici courts and his Florentine academy obviously alluding to their more sedate and gentle nature. Bronzino founded and became a prominent member of the Accademia del Disegno, the Florence Academy of Fine Arts, in collaboration with Giorgio Vasari. The Accademia del Disegno was the first official academy in Europe to foster what is now called academic art. Bronzino had many pupils, but his favorite was Alessandro Allori, who himself became a leading Florentine painter in his own time, that of the late Cinque Centro. Bronzino's relationship with Allori mirrored that of his own at one time with Patormo, that of master and pupil, and of father and son. Near the end of his life, Bronzino's artistic style had become outdated due to the newly introduced style of the burgeoning Baroque period and patrons began to lose interest in his work. Bronzino's last work, an incomplete fresco in San Lorenzo, was lovingly finished in his honor by Alessandro Lori after his death in 1572. Bronzino left a legacy that continued on with his pupil Alessandro Lori who upon Bronzino's death took his place as court painter for the Medici family, a position Bronzino had held right up until the day he died. Allori carried on with his master style of portraiture and was himself considered one of the last mannerist artists before the Baroque era began in earnest. True to his master's aesthetic to the end, Allori's paintings are sometimes confused with those of Bronzino's much as the origin of Bronzino's and Pontormo's works are at times in contention within the artistic community. 
The austere and elegant figures of Bronzino's subjects and the vibrant hues utilized by the master have established Bronzino as one of the greatest mannerist painters of his time, a legacy that persists to this day.